let's see. Well, recap, we'll start with a recap. Um, you know, obviously coming off of uh, an open week, um, gave our guys an opportunity to certainly um, recover, uh, but, but work on, you know, those things that uh, we needed to get better at from the a &M game. And, and I think they're pretty obvious, right, in, in terms of, you know, our ability to have balance on offense. Um, you know, the quarterback running game, special teams, uh, consistency in that area. Um, you know, we're all focused um, opportunities for us during the bye week. So recovery uh, areas to improve on uh, within the execution uh, of our offense, defense, and special teams. And, uh, and again, you know, get some conditioning, weight training in as well. So... Brought the guys back yesterday, got a chance to do scouting reports and uh, weight train and uh, get an opportunity to, um, you know, give our guys an opportunity, uh, a bonus, if you will, look at, at Alabama. Uh, and now we take on a, an outstanding football team, probably as balanced of a football team that we're going to play this year. And when I mean balanced, I don't mean necessarily in terms of offense, defense, in terms of 50-50. I mean talent level across the board. Apparently no weaknesses in my eyes relative to their talent level. Um, I think, you know, sometimes when we look at teams, we look at, you know, potential weaknesses at a particular position. I don't see any uh, with this team. Defensive line, linebackers, uh, secondary, safeties, corners. Uh, offensive line, running backs, quarterback, wide receivers. You know, this is a extremely talented football team uh, with no apparent weaknesses. Well coached, um, you know, and, and certainly, you know, a football team that, you know, we'll have to play our best against. Um, you know, leading into the game, um, the, the keys to success are, are, are pretty obvious from an offensive standpoint, taking care of the football. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we'll have to have better balance, you know, offensively, um, and, and, and that will be a prerequisite. Um, defensively, you know, stopping the quarterback um, is, is going to be paramount. Milrose outstanding. Um, he also can throw the football, so, you know, he is a dual threat. Um, you know, I think first down is an important down as well. I mean, they're, they're one of the best third down and short uh, conversion teams in the country. Uh, we need to get them behind the chains. Uh, so that will be an important element um, of the game. Um, you know, again, continue to, to get the ball to our playmakers. You know, uh, Nice Mars is still second in SEC in passing with 20 touchdowns. Lacey, Taylor, Anderson, all have been big play guys for us. Um, you know, Swinson and Weeks on defense. You know, continue to play to our strengths. Uh, is going to be absolutely important. You know, Kalen DeVore's done a great job uh, wherever he's been. They had a great victory against a, a top 25 team in, in Missouri and being them 34 nothing. And, of course, they've got the great win over uh, a number one Georgia team earlier in the season. So, um, as I mentioned, uh, Milrow, um, tandem backs, and Miller and Haynes, you know, we all have heard and seen about what Ryan Williams can do. Tight ends, they're deep, offensive line experienced. And then defensively, you know, I, I think Malachi Moore is probably one of the most productive safeties in the country. Um, you know, Lawson is, is a handful, uh, probably one of the more experienced linebackers in the country. Overton is the transfer from a and I mean, it's a really good football team. Nicholson won the Groza last year at, at kicker. So as I mentioned, you know, it's a team that has – no apparent weaknesses in my eyes in terms of every single position up and down the board. Um, again, um, we're up for the challenge. We're excited about it. Playing at, at Tiger Stadium um, has been good medicine for us. Now we've got to go out and execute and play um, LSU football for four quarters. So with that, we'll open up to questions. Hey, Brian. Was Garrett Dellinger's ankle sprain the kind that would require us? Did it, did it require a surgery? Yeah, he had a tightrope surgery, uh, so he will be out for this weekend's game against Alabama. Hey, Coach, a lot of people are calling this a playoff game in itself. Do you embrace that kind of talk? Does that give urgency to it, or does it create 
anxiety and you stay away from that? Yeah, you know, I think, you know, each game that, that, that we play is, is a new game in itself. And I think it goes to what I talked about. You know, we're much more focused on playing four quarters of football. You know, um, our focus last week was, you know, cleaning up the things that, that we needed to take care of internally. And so our focus, where our real work was, was thinking about what we needed to do better to play at a higher level. Look, all that other stuff is out there, um, but it doesn't help us relative to what we need to do. And I know there's been other national talks about you know, this is an elimination game. Well, if this is an elimination game, every game in the SEC is an elimination game. You know, everybody that has a loss, everybody that has two losses, everybody that plays each other, it's an elimination game. So we can kind of like put that to rest. This is really about each team in the SEC knows where they're at, right? I mean, the record speaks for itself. This is about you need to play your very best when your best is needed. Coach, uh, we talked a lot about how the running game is important to stay in front ahead of the sticks, but how important is a guy also like Aaron Anderson in the slot who can, you know, kind of keep you guys ahead of the sticks in the, in, in the quick game, in quick game? Yeah, example. no, no doubt, and he's been there for us, right? I mean, I think, I think we have, you know, guys like Mason Taylor and Aaron Anderson, and and then you know certainly. Kyron Lacey's been big for us on third down. We've got to be more consistent across the board and, um, you know, creating a little bit more uncertainty in terms of what we are doing uh, and, and making sure that we can, you know, uh, get the ball to the playmakers, but uh, be able to include that in uh, a variety of different ways and include, you know, the screen game and misdirection and the running game and create a little bit more uncertainty in terms of, uh, what we're doing offensively, and and, um, and I think you'll see that as we continue to move forward. Brian, in that regards, C.J. Daniels seems yeah. to be so pivotal to opening up a lot of your offense. How, yeah. how, how healthy is he? Can you kind of elaborate on what he gives you guys as far as versatility? And then just with the potential of a storm coming this weekend, how much do you monitor that? How much yeah. have you talked with the conference about that? Yeah, so CJ is much better than he was, obviously, going into the A&M game. And, and I thought he did a terrific job getting himself ready. I thought our training staff um, did an incredible job, our doctors, in helping him get ready for a game um, that, you know, in, in many instances, it was a game time decision. I, I know a lot of you were there, and you saw him working out before the game to, to get himself ready. Um, unfortunately, he couldn't answer the bell in the second half, but he's further along. Um, you know, we don't have to put out a report, but I, I would say he's, he's much better than he was a couple of weeks ago, and, and the expectation would be that, that he's going to be able to help us. Goodness, I mean, there's so many things to consider going into, um, you know, the Alabama game. The one thing I didn't have to think about, I thought, was, you know, another storm coming. But... Uh, as we get closer to uh, game time, probably tomorrow, we'll, we'll probably have to look a little bit closer at the weather situation, um, but is definitely on the list now. Yeah, Brian, um, last month of the season coming up, SEC, a lot of one, uh, one loss team, a lot of two loss teams. NIL, has it created the parity that you see in pro football? Has it brought that to college football? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know that. It, it's hard for me to really assess that like halfway through the season and looking at the rosters. Look, there's been transfers, right? There's been transfers from, you know, different schools that have made impacts, you know, and maybe some have negatively impact rosters. Uh, but those are choices, right? Those are choices that programs and coaches make. So, you know, I don't know that if you take in – its totality, whether it's been a plus or a minus. I think some schools would say it's been a positive for us. Some might say, well, maybe I shouldn't have made this decision, but it's still a choice that you make. So in terms of being able to kind of give a, you know, a statement as to whether it's good or bad, I think it's out there. And then you have to make that individual decision as to, you know, whether you know, that's something that you want to be part of rather than the transfer portal. But NIL is a good thing. NIL is a positive thing that you have to be able to manage within your program. And I don't think that that has 
um, sidetracked us. I think transfers and making decisions on all of those things has probably been one of the bigger issues because it, it, it changes your roster. It changes the chemistry. It changes, you know, how you look at your roster each and every year. You talked about it last week, use, uh, using last week to clean some things up. How was that received from the guys? Is it something as simple as when you see tape, it, it really clicks with them or is there further explanation needed? Well, I think each situation is different. Look, they, they clearly knew what happened uh, in, in the Texas A&M game, I mean, just just to recap, you know, we turned the ball over three times and, and we couldn't stop a quarterback. We, we didn't have the emotional flexibility to kind of flip the switch. And, and did we spend enough time in helping our guys do that, right? So this is coaches coaching and players playing. Did we do our best? And obviously we did not, right? So uh, collectively, we all had to... Uh, take ownership in that last week. So it wasn't a fun week to be around, but, you know, we've put that past us, and, and our focus and attention has been on working on getting better in those areas that we know that we have to get better in as coaches and players and, and getting prepared for a really good Alabama team. Coach, right down here to your left, uh, can you talk a little bit about Paul Mabinga and what you guys saw out of him uh, in that A&M game in just terms of getting him ready uh, to maybe go for maybe more than just one game this week? Yeah, I mean, you know, Paul has steadily worked himself up into, um, you know, what would have been what I would call a key backup, right? Somebody that, you know, uh, is poised to go in uh, in a pivotal time and, and you expect him to get the job done. Now he's a starter for us, most likely, for, for at least this week, right? And so... Um, his development has been one where I think he's made his most progress um, through uh, execution. He's, he's, a, he's a quick study. Um, you know, you don't have to tell him twice. Uh, he understands our scheme in terms of what we're trying to accomplish. This has been really just about the physical development of Paul, more so than it has been about... Um, you know, his mental um, uh, abilities relative to picking up what we want to do and how we want to do it. In what ways uh, is Jalen Milrow maybe used differently in Kalen DeBoer's offense than what they asked him to do a year ago under Tommy Reese? Well, last year, Matt, it was evolving. Like, <laughs> I don't know that they knew what they wanted to do because it was a quarterback controversy. Not quite, you know, but they, they were kind of playing multiple quarterbacks last year at Alabama. I think they had two or three quarterbacks going back and forth. Then they kind of settled on uh, Milrow just before they got to us. And, and it was, you know, I think, you know, big chunk play. You know, it was run the quarterback. Here they've, they've had all spring and they've settled on a system with a starting quarterback. So it's consistency week in and week out. They're doing the same thing with him week in and week out. So you, there's a comfort level within the offense. When we got to him last year, you weren't really sure what you were going to get. It was a little bit of everything. And, and now there's a consistency within their offensive structure, and there's a comfort level in terms of what he's doing. Brian, uh Recently, Jacoby and Guillory just said he uh, decided to he's going to use his last year of eligibility yeah. in return. Uh, just what does that mean for you guys next year? I know we're still got a lot of games to play this year, but just being able to know that he's going to be back for the defense next year, just kind of how much of a boost is that? Well, he's a stalwart. You know, he's a physically gifted player, strong, um, mature. Uh, he brings a presence, you know, f certainly for us in terms of the leadership part. Um, and, and he's a really good football player. So you, you're just adding some stability to the defensive line, um, you know, with some really good young players that are getting seasoned this year. So where as much as it was a concern or a question mark coming into the season, I think as we evolve through the season, um, you know, with having him back and the guys that have gotten a lot of work at that position and in recruiting, I think we're going to find that back to being 
what it should be here at LSU, and that's a strength at that position. Coach, after the A&M game, you said we need to get Garrett Nussmeyer some help. We need to help him out. How, how productive was the open date in terms of looking at your running game and some of those other things that you can improve on in this Bama game? Yeah, I mean, I, I stand behind my comments. Uh, now, now they have to come to fruition, right? I mean, we've got to go do it. Um, and, and part of it was, look, I mean, you know, Garrett can't be the guy that, that feels like he's got to go do everything. And, and part of it has to come from Garrett to understand that, you know, I don't have to make a play every time I'm out there. Zero is okay, right? So a little bit comes from Garrett, and a little bit comes from play calling, and a little bit comes from, you know, the ability to commit to, to making sure that we have some more balance in terms of the running game. And that means we got to block better, you know, and I don't mean just the five guys. I mean, you know, the receivers and the tight end and the backs got to do a better job of seeing things and getting to the second level and making people miss. So it's an all in thing, right? When we say that, it's not just saying one guy's got to do a better job at, you know, giving Garrett, you know, more assistance. Everybody's got to be involved in that. Oh, yeah, Coach, right here. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a big game for guys like Zy Alexander and Ashton Stamps going head to head with Ryan Williams and Bernard. Just what have you seen from that tandem over the last several weeks in terms of their development if you, as you've settled into those two guys? And how has maybe Corey Raymond had an impact on you know, their development this year? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I mean, I, I'd, I'd like to stand here each and every week and, and credit, you know, Corey or Bo Davis or you know, Brad Davis or Joe Sloan, I mean, you, you know, that comes with the territory, right? At the end of the day, players have to play consistently um, based upon trusting the technique and trusting their ability. I think what we see here with the corners in particular is a trust in the teaching and then a trust in themselves. They're trusting themselves a lot more. They're playing with a lot more confidence. And, and I, I think that that's the next step in the maturation of a, a, a player like Stamps, for example. I, I think uh, Alexander's had a little bit more of that because he's a little bit more of an older player in a sense, right? Um, but, but that's really it, right? Uh, players playing with more confidence, I think, at that position, uh, trusting their teaching, uh, and certainly trusting uh, themselves that they can go out there and, and they can play um, with a great deal of confidence and, and swagger. Hey, Coach, over here, a little bit of a two-parter. Uh, first, I mean, college game day, coming to campus, the first time since you've been the head coach at LSU, just talk about them coming over here to LSU, again, prepare for a big game and get your guys maybe not distracted by uh, the big environment this Saturday. In the second part, Kalen DeBoer, I know he went up the coaching ranks like yourself from Division Two up to now. Just what have been some of the conversations you've had with him since he's become the head coach at Alabama? Yeah, we're excited about having game day here. Um, certainly, it's great for the community. It's certainly great for our campus. Uh, the exposure of game day, um, you know, does, does a, a great deal for, you know, the, the just the entire identity, right, of, of Baton Rouge, the state of Louisiana, LSU, college football is, is kind of like the hub, you know, when, when you bring it in. So I think that's going to create a lot of excitement. And, um, you know, we're pleased that they've, they've chosen LSU for that. Um, Kaylin and I have not had a chance to speak, but just in passing, it's just one of those things where, you know, he was playing for a national championship, um, then got the job, and it's been kind of a whirlwind for him. So any time that we've gotten together, it's been in passing. Uh, but we do share a, a common bond, and, you know, we both worked our way up. Um, you know, we both learned how to do the laundry, uh, literally and figuratively. And, and so, you know, th those, those kinds of experiences um, – lend itself to having a mutual respect for each other. And uh, I know I respect the work that he's done, and, um, you know, he's, he's continuing to do it on, on every level. Ryan, uh, your thoughts, if any, on the SEC <coughs> cracking down on teams faking injuries? And uh, also a, a second question, if you have time. Did, didn't you, you guys make a point earlier this year to try to get your players registered to vote and, and voting? Yeah. And how did, how did that go, you know, if you can give a percentage? 
Well, you know, I thought that the memo was, was timely. Um, uh, appreciate uh, our commissioner uh, standing out uh, amongst college football and, and, and making it, you know, uh, clear that this kind of, I think, nonsense was maybe the word that was used, needs to stop. It's, it's silly. Um, you know, the game doesn't need to get to a level where, you know, you're using that as, as a way to um, slow down a game, one way or the other. Um, so uh, be that as it may, I, I mean, I think uh, just standing up and saying enough's enough is, is what um, needed to happen, and I'm, I'm glad the commissioner did that. As far as voting, I don't have the, the exact numbers, um, but I know that our players, um, when we've asked them to be involved in the community, they have been on it. Um, we took the time to ask them to vote uh, and register for, to vote. Um, so my expectations are that um, they're, they're pretty tuned into how important this election is uh, and every election. And when we brought in um, and the Go Vote, which is a local community organization here on campus, um, uh, they talked not only about the presidential election, but how important the local elections are um, that can impact, um, you know, your communities. So um, we, we didn't just talk about the presidential elections. We talked about the local elections, how important they are in terms of, you know, things that are important to you. So this was not kind of just, hey, go out and vote. This was we, we spent time with our players and making sure they understood uh, the impact at grassroots levels, how important it is to vote. Hey, Coach, does uh, Dellinger have a chance to return later in the season, or like postseason, or, or uh, what we're, do you we're, think? we're expecting him um, to have a, a solid chance for Florida. Brian, uh, with the running ba with the running game, is it something where y'all thought maybe because Garrett just hasn't gotten that part of his game yet, where he's you know taking the ball and running it himself on zone reads and those sorts of things, that maybe that needs to change in the offense? I mean, I would like to give you a simple answer, but it's not a simple answer. There, there are, um, you know, when, when you're in 11 personnel, um, you know, one back personnel, um, it, it becomes a numbers game, right? And, and so those numbers have to be right. The quarterback has to get you in the right plays. Um, you know, your backs really need to be good at, at – at, um, discerning, you know, what the right cut is. Um, your tight ends and receivers have to be really good at blocking on the perimeter. This is an all-in thing. And, and look, uh, the question is, is a good question, but, but it has a lot of layers to it. We have to be better, and we need to be better. Yeah, Brian, can you give an update on West Weeks, uh, just his health situation, if you all plan on playing him again for the remainder of the season? Like, he's got, he's got games remaining. Um, our, our hope is, uh, because he has another season of eligibility, that if we could save that season of eligibility, we would prefer to do that. We've had a conversation with the family uh, and, and with West about doing that. We think he's an outstanding leader. We feel as though, um, you know, as things move forward, uh, to have a veteran presence coming back next season uh, would be in everybody's best interest. But we've made it clear um, if there's an injury and uh, there's a need to win football games and win a championship, he's got to be ready. So it's kind of where we're at right now relative to Wes. Right down here, Coach. Uh, in the preseason and kind of throughout the season, the defensive line, especially the interior, talked about a need and a want to to develop and being more violent, not just being guys that kind of you know stick up an offensive line, but being violent and getting in the backfield. Where have you seen some of these guys grow? Gio Paez being one of those guys, and then you coach the D2 level, just a guy like JVR Suggs becoming a contributor and making some plays for you guys. Yeah, so each guy has a different um, – well, first of all, they're all the same in terms of how they're coached. Uh, Bo does a really good job of, of treating everybody um, – you know, equally um, and, and fairly, uh, but 
each one has a different skill set. Like Suggs, for example, has got great feet and, and is a slippery pass rusher. Uh, Geo is a real uh, solid, gap-conscious player against the run. Not that he can't rush the passer, he can. Um, but just pointing out what, what their, their difference is. Um, Shown is, is um, emerging as a player that's big and physical, um, that can give us some snaps. And Ahmad Bro has been a very active player for us, um, using his hands extremely well. So it's really kind of mix and match. And then we've moved Paris Shand inside, who gives us a little bit of a veteran presence and a little bit of all those things, just not quite as physically uh, as big as those guys. He's about 285 pounds. So it's really been um, taking the strengths of each one of those guys and matching them, giving the circumstances. Hey, Coach, Alabama is the fourth team with the most uh, flags during the season. What can you guys do to create those, those flags and take advantage, advantage of that? I mean, I, I think, you know, hopefully our crowd's loud um, and, and will cause a lot of um, pre-snap penalties. Uh, that's one thing we can hope for. Uh, maybe the lights, we'll turn the lights off on them a couple of times. Uh, we're going to try everything. Um, but, you know, other than that, it's, it's really about, you know, for us, maintaining our composure and, and really... For us, you know, we can't be that team, you know, that, that gets flagged. Um, look, there's, there's always going to be a, a penalty, you know, because there's extra effort, and, and, and I get that. But, you know, we can't have the pre-snap penalties. We can't have the ones that are um, out of emotion. Um, and, and so, you know, we'll look to continue to play hard, and hopefully that uh, – Tiger Stadium becomes a little bit too much uh, for the Crimson Tide to handle. All right, thank you.